Hello. Today, I'd like to share with you Joanne's story. It's found in Real Life Stories, Lighthouse Edition, number six. It's found on page 42, 40, in chapter nine, entitled, I was sick of the shame, guilt, misery, and pain. She says, come with me back in time. I am 12 years old. And that summer would be a very pivotal point in my life. Her parents divorced, and she recalls crying, but not having any words to express how she felt. She was just sad, and that sadness grew into, into bitterness and anger. Being in that state of mind, she became very reckless. She stopped listening to to the common sense her parents had instilled in her at that point. And, and she began making some very destructive decisions, decisions that would ultimately leave her in a suicidal state of mind. Against her better judgment, she took a shortcut home and was crossing the creek at the golf course. She saw three young boys from her grandmother's church playing there. Sadly, because of what happened next, she judged the whole Christian community and thought she would never step foot in church again. These boys considered her to be their next sporting event and began chasing her, telling her of the crude sexual things they would do if they caught her. Mortified and barefoot, she ran down the creek there was a boy on either end of the bank and one running down the middle after her. Some friends, some friends of hers heard her screaming and, and they came to help. Her feet were all cut up from the rocks. They wrapped them, called her mother and got her to the hospital. Her summer continued to spiral out of control. The next event would steal all her self-esteem. It set her spiraling into the pits of hell. Against her parents' wishes, she snuck down to the creek to meet an older boy. Now, if there's one thing in her life that she has learned, it, it is this. Sin will take you further than you want to go. It will keep you longer than you want to stay and it will make you pay way more than you ever wanted to pay. On that creek bank, one thing led to another, that led to another, and before she could get out of what was happening next, she simply froze. Fear gripped her and crippled her. All she could do was shake her head no. She couldn't even speak. She was so immature, she had no idea how to get out of the situation she was in. That young man had his way with her and then was gone. Her mind went numb. She cried for days and thought she couldn't tell, tell anyone who would believe her. She was the one that started it by kissing him. Who would believe he took more than what was intended? That summer was the beginning of many wrong decisions. She decided that since she was now used goods defiled and ugly that she had to settle for anything. And for some strange reason her mind began to think that since God let this all happened that he didn't care about her anymore. So she started down a road of self-destruction. This road included drugs, robbery, men, alcohol, and ultimately came to an abrupt stop with an attempted suicide by drug overdose. The pain was too much. 
She saw no other way out and no place to turn. She was so bad that she felt even God wouldn't want her. Now you might think, how could she do that to them? But what about her family and friends? The very people that loved her. Unless you have been that low in life, it's hard to understand what happened. Satan loves to get you all by yourself and tells you that you are worthless. That no one understands the pain that you're going through. That no one cares about you. And that there is no escaping the pain, the shame, the guilt that you're now carrying. When you are at that point in your life, you can't see what is truly happening. All you want is for the pain to stop and you don't care how. You don't think about how your family or friends will feel. You don't stop to think about the pain that you will cause at your death. And those that love and need you will be left behind. You don't realize that Satan had planted those thoughts in your mind. She says, thank you, Jesus, that someone picked up on what she had gently said and called her mother. Her mother rushed her to the hospital and her life was spared. But spared for what? She, she couldn't figure out until much later in life. Fast forward some 17 years. She's around 35 years old with a college degree and two awesome children. But so broken and hard hearted. She's now experienced a failed marriage, numerous failed relationships and a complete nervous breakdown. She knew that there had to be more to life than this. She was such a mess. All of her relationships had been sabotaged and she just couldn't do enough of what this world calls a wonderful life to fill this huge black void in her heart. She so desperately wanted to feel joy, love, peace, and happiness. But she had no idea how. She was sick of the shame, the guilt, the misery and pain. She had just started a new job at Frito-Lay. And out of nowhere, a good friend of hers came walking into the break room. She hadn't seen Jim in a long while. She knew that she knew the Lord sent him back into her life. Though she wouldn't figure that out until much later as well. Jim began telling her about the grace of God and, and how it overcame sin. He invited her to go to church with him one Sunday. And believe it or not, she accepted. She had wanted to go for a long time, but she was truly afraid that the walls would come down if she did. She just knew that God hated her. And with all of the things that she'd done, she couldn't blame him. It just so happened that her stepsister, Deanna, was there as well that day. And she got to see a transformation take place in Joanne. For when the pastor began speaking about how Jesus paid the price for her sin. And all she had to do was simply accept his free gift of grace. She just couldn't believe it. She felt so dirty that she didn't think that he could save her. But as the morning wore on and the pastor spoke about 
a robe of righteousness, about having a relationship with Christ, and how when she accepts Jesus as her Lord and Savior, her sins would be washed away, and she would be made new. She just knew it had to be true. He also mentioned how there's always more grace in God than there is sin in us. Joanne is so glad that she accepted his offer of grace. She couldn't believe she was no longer that cold-hearted, drug-addicted, rebellious, adulterous woman. Thank you, Jesus. That person was crucified with you. She became a daughter to the Most High. Today, she began a relationship with Jesus. Jim and Joanne began daddy. But shortly into the relationship, she got scared and tried to sabotage it. She went back to her old ways, committed adultery, and betrayed her best friend. That night was the most agonizing night of her life. She knew that she had made a terrible mistake and, and couldn't remain in her old ways. She knew that this was going to be a changing point in history. But she had no idea just how radical it would be. It took her over an hour to speak just a couple of sentences to Jim. She couldn't quit crying. She'd talk a little and then sob a lot. She'd get a, a little further in the story and then couldn't speak. Praise God, Jim sat patiently waiting while she worked this repentance matter out with Jesus and him. Jim revealed to her later that the Holy Spirit had come upon him and revealed to him that she had what she had been trying to say for days. Jesus protected his heart. And if he would wait, she would be his rose waiting to bloom and his soulmate. As Joanne finally confessed her sins and waited for what she thought would be a very tragic end. She found she was so terribly wrong. At that moment, she truly believed she saw the face of Jesus. Jim asked if she had repented. He asked if she had accepted Jesus' forgiveness. And Joanne answered yes. What he said to her next changed her forever. Jim said, then go and sin no more. He knew Jesus had forgiven her. He said, who am I to not do the same? He said that they would never talk of this again unless it was to bring glory to the king. For it is by his grace that she had been set free. Months later, Jim asked for Joanne's hand in marriage. They were married on July 7th, 2000. They now have a blended family of seven sons and daughters, ten grandchildren, and one on the way very soon as of this writing. That night, Joanne truly understood what it meant to be redeemed by the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the beginning of this story, Joanne mentioned that she was angry with God and said, if God is good, how could he have let those bad things happen? Through life's lessons, she has learned that God is good. And it wasn't God who made those things happen, but Satan. 
who walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he can de devour. This story does have a tremendously awesome ending. Originally, she had lovingly told her husband that he couldn't be a pastor because nowhere in their marriage license did it state that she would be a pastor's wife. Praise God, Joanne got over that. The two of them are now ordained pastors. They travel and minister to others all over the country and hopefully one day all over the nation. God willing, her husband and she are chaplains for their community and in the county jail. It is such a great honor to be an ambassador for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Joanne goes on to say, never forget that Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. He says, everywhere in the Bible, you will read time and time again where God has taken a messed up person and turned their life story into a beautiful page of history to glorify the king. It has never been Joanne's dream to see her name in these pages. It's always been about the story, hoping to bring God glory to set people free, to set his people free. This is Joanne Spaulding's story from Frankfurt, Indiana. If you'd like to get in touch with Joanne, you can do so at J. Spaulding, S-P-A-U-L-D-I-N-G, 401 at AT&T.net. Her number, if you'd like to call, is 765-652-1397. Yes, for those of you who have been following this series, the gym that she talked about in her story is the gym. you will hear from in the next chapter of this book, chapter 10. If you'd like to learn more about the group that is publishing this series of books, or if you'd like to have a copy of this book, you can call or text Jim Barbarossa at 219-762. 7589. Or you can write to Step by Step Ministries, 815 South Babcock Road, Porter, Indiana, 46304. Or you can visit their website at www.step step by step.org. Or you can contact Jim personally, Jim Barbarossa, at jim at step-by-step.org. And once again, you can even call him at 219-762-7589. Before I close, I'd like to just give a shout out to my camera person and technical director who's been with with me for all of these all of these stories that I've been sharing with you. It's my wife, Sharon. Thank you for helping Sharon. God bless. Till next time. Amen. Amen.